Greetings, my friends, and welcome to another episode of the Real Movie News Podcast, a place for all of us real movie fans. Now, it's the Halloween season, so it's only appropriate to review a movie named just that. However, before I get to our review, I just wanted to bring something up that I talked about in the last episode of the Real Movie News Podcast. Now, I mentioned that I wanted to start doing a little bit more of a mailbag session on the weekends. Unfortunately, I was unable to get to that. A lot of stuff came up. However, cross my heart, it's absolutely happening this coming weekend. So what I'm going to be what I'm going to be doing is putting together a news rundown. Uh, you can visit my blog, realmovienews.net, and see the things that I'm going to be writing up about the latest and breaking in movie news. On the weekends, I'm going to do a rundown and give my opinions on everything that's been going on. And after that's all said and done, I want to be able to take user and listener submitted questions. So you can send me those questions on my Twitter, at Kylan Real Critic, R-E-E-L, because we're a bunch of real movie fans. Or you can message me on the blog, just like I said, realmovienews.net. Now, without any further ado, let's get into my review of Halloween. There's a reason we're supposed to be afraid of this night. I've been preparing for this for a long time. It is not safe to be on the street tonight. Go home! Get out of here! Get inside! Michael! He's here. 2018's Halloween takes place 40 years after the events of the first Halloween that were, that came out back in 1978. Surprisingly, Hollywood is doing this thing where you put out a sequel to a movie and disregard some of the other movies that came out in the franchise. Uh, movies that have done this so far are Terminator, Alien, uh, and to a lesser extent, the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. And at first when I heard that they were going to do this with the Halloween movie, I was pretty upset with it. I'm not a huge fan of the franchise, but I thought it was going to be sloppy to just say, hey, we're going to make Halloween the sequel to Halloween, and we're also going to completely disregard all the storylines where Laurie Strode became Michael Myers' sister and that's why he's hunting her down and a bunch of other plot points that became crucial to the Michael Myers uh, lore. However, I have to take back anything that I said negatively about this idea because this film really makes it work. Jamie Lee Curtis's ability to portray someone who's been tormented by the events that happened to her 40 years ago and be paranoid and yet prepared at the same time and hoping that Michael was to escape the prison that they put him in, the mental institution that they put him in, in order for her to be able to kill him. She nails that, and the filmmakers wouldn't have been able to explore that point if this was just another sequel. So going back and calling this a direct sequel to the first one and ignoring Halloween Part 2 on, it's probably the best thing that they could have done for this franchise. If you're a fan of the Halloween movies, then there is definitely something here for you. What David Gordon Green, the director of this movie, does so brilliantly is a lot of callbacks to the first movie. Um, One example, this is not a spoiler, one example of this is Laurie's granddaughter who is in school. She looks out the window and she sees her grandmother staring at her through the window And this is a shot, this is a scene pulled directly from the 1978 Halloween where Laurie Strode, Jamie Lee Curtis, is sitting in a classroom. She looks out the window and she sees Michael Myers just standing there staring at her intently and stalking her. It's a really creepy scene in both movies. And this goes to show that Laurie Strode is somebody who has been tormented to the point that She's not all there mentally. Uh, One thing that Gordon Green does so well is making her seem like her and Michael have become two sides of the same coin. Both damaged, both 
looking for something, Lori to look for a way out of her torment, and Michael looking to get revenge and kill Lori and many others that live in Haddonfield. Another thing that I've got to give this film credit for is its ability to make Michael seem even more menacing than he was in 1978. The kills in this movie are so much more brutal and bloody and gory, and I have to say, it I love it. It really adds to showing that Michael is back, and he is ready to start killing, and he's even more pissed off than he was in the first movie. He is on a mission to destroy Laurie Strode, her family, and everybody else who lives in Haddonfield. The killings are so brutal and violent that they take away any humanity that Michael could have had. They It shows that this is not a man. This is a creature. This is a shape, a monster that is going to stalk and murder you on Halloween night. If you're a fan of any slasher genre, or even if you're just a fan of horror, this is something that you're absolutely going to love. Now, slasher movies definitely don't scare me. This movie did not scare me. However, I'm not going to use that as a detractor for the film. I was in a full theater, and there were people in there that were absolutely terrified. I'm just there to get my sick kicks of watching people get stabbed. I'm a sicko, so what? If you're in that movie and you're enjoying it, you're a sicko with me. So enjoy Halloween. Now, this movie isn't perfect. One thing that I mentioned in my review on realmovienews.net is that the pacing at the beginning of the movie is pretty slow. And this does harken back to the very first movie. It did take a while before Michael actually started killing people. However, in the year 2018, we have, as an audience, have gotten very used to seeing a lot of different horror movies. This was not something that was as prominent in 1978. So getting to those kills a little bit quicker is something that would have made this film feel like it was moving a little bit better. Uh, I do understand that they needed to set up the new characters. They needed to show a little bit more of the stalking aspect that Michael was very well known for. However, it took way too long. This is not something that's going to bother everybody. If you are a die-hard fan of the original Halloween, then you're going to see this as something that is almost an homage to the previous films. However... For a film that's supposed to be entertaining here in the Halloween season, I have to say it. I did not like that I had to wait so long before things finally started to get ramped up. However, once things did get started, it just kept going and going. The body count kept piling up, and Michael just showed that he was here to stay and that the franchise is back, it's healthy, and don't be surprised if you start seeing a lot of sequels. This movie has made a lot of money at the box office so far. I'm not surprised that it has, and it's going to it's going to continue to do so as October keeps going. I do have to say another thing that I have to this is a nitpick gripe, but there were a few plot points that I really really did not like. Once again, I'm nitpicking. This is something that's only for me. There are plenty of people out there that are not going to be bothered by this. But there's one character and once again, I'm not going to show any spoilers or tell any spoilers, but there's a character that we are introduced to at the beginning of the movie, and he, his actions, the what he says, the way he acts, are completely contradicted by the last half of the film. He becomes a completely different person almost instantly, and it makes no sense. I understand wanting to put in a little bit of a twist in there and get audience members on edge and really start to amp up the excitement level as we get to the final showdown. But it comes out of nowhere, and it's feels like something that is true potential that's just wasted. Another thing that I did not like, and anybody out there is going to notice this, is that there's a character that we're introduced to, and this is not a spoiler, so I'll be able to tell you who it is. It's Laurie Strode's granddaughter's boyfriend, we're introduced to him. 
we are shown his character. He has a lot of interaction with Laurie's granddaughter. And then he just disappears. Out of nowhere, He, it, where you think that the plot point is going to keep going, you never see or hear or have him mentioned again. And it's not that he gets killed off and then we don't see him. No. He just never shows up again. And he was an integral plot point for the granddaughter. So the fact that they left that completely wide open makes no sense to me. It feels like the filmmakers just completely forgot about him. It's quite funny, actually. But like I said, that's just a minor nitpick. This is definitely a movie that most people are going to go out and like. Even if you're not a big horror fan, there's definitely something here for you as well. If you've never seen a Halloween movie before, you can watch this one and not feel lost. They do a really good job of explaining what happened previously. So I recommend going out to see it. This is not the greatest horror movie of all time. This isn't even the greatest horror movie that's come out this year. But if you are in the mood for some thrills and some chills, and you're just in the mood for a a good horror film that's going to entertain you, I highly recommend going out and seeing Halloween this Halloween season. For a score, I'm going to give 2018's Halloween a 7 out of 10. Yay. Now, my opinion is not the only one that matters. Have you seen Halloween lately? If you have, feel free to leave a comment below. I'm pretty scarce on comments right now, so why don't you be the first one to comment on the Real Movie News Podcast? Tell me what you thought of this movie, or if you haven't seen it, let me know if you're going to see it. Leave a comment below, and let's make a discussion out of this. Well, that'll do it for me, guys. Thank you so much again for listening to this review. Remember that you can always send me questions or catch me on Twitter at Kylan Real Critic, or you can hit me up on my blog, realmovienews.net. And don't forget the upcoming mailbag session that's going to happen this weekend if I get enough questions. If you have anything uh, regarding movie topics, or you just want to know a little bit about me and my movie tastes, send me some questions at those places. All right, guys, my name's Kylan Riley, host of the Real Movie News Podcast, and until next time, keep it real.